Every like, every comment, and every subscriber gives me motivation daily to bring you guys the best MMA content on YouTube. So a subscriber asked me to make this video a while ago, and I told him that I would, but that, like I said, that was a while ago. Just letting you know, I ain't forget about you, subscriber, but here we go. Let's jump right into it. At the time of this recording, Hamza Shemaev is 9-0 in the sport of mixed martial arts, and is 3-0 in the UFC. The crazy thing is that if this was any other athlete competing in mixed martial arts, we would just look at him as another beginner, looking to pave his way through the ranks. But considering the hype that Hamza Shemaev has garnered for himself, you would think that this guy is some sort of number one contender or something. But what makes him so overrated? Hamza Shemaev made his debut against a guy on short notice who was 0-2 in the organization at the time. Shemaev went on to put on one of the most dominant performances ever seen inside the octagon, battering the poor guy from pillar to post. The defeat was so dominant that it automatically put him on the map. Considering he wasn't even fighting anybody of substance, that didn't even matter, and this trend of taking short notice fights only continued, taking more short notice fights and fighting for the organization whenever they basically told him to, dominating every single moment of every single fight that he would be in. If you've been a fan of the UFC, you know what happens when they really get behind a fighter. They promote them like crazy and push them to their maximum potential. This has worked very well for them and has also backfired. Matter of fact, the UFC was so behind Shemaev that he became one of the only fighters to ever have scheduled two fights at once, not to mention fighting at two separate weight classes. That two fight scheduling included his toughest test at the time, a guy named Gerald Mearshart at the UFC PI in Vegas in the middle of quarantine. The UFC was the only sports promotion consistently putting on events for live television, so a lot of eyes were on this particular bout. We wanted to see what Hamzat Shemaev really had, and there was a lot of buildup with a lot of trash talk coming from both sides. Well, his toughest test at the time ended up being his quickest night at the office, knocking out Gerald Mearshart in under 30 seconds and throwing only one significant strike. And boy, was the hype about the spillover at this point. That second fight that was scheduled ended up not happening, and that fight was rumored to be Damian Maya. But the UFC had other plans, and they wanted to push Shemaev even further, giving him a high ranked opponent. Leon Edwards versus Hamza Shemaev was booked and was going to be Shemaev's first ranked opponent. But the fight fell out multiple times with both fighters testing positive for COVID 19 and eventually getting completely scrapped when Kamzat Shemaev could not completely recover from his symptoms. This then forced him to retire, making all the hype disappear. Now here we are. He is set to make his return against the number 11th ranked welterweight contender. And since I have to call a spade a spade, I have to give him the same treatment I give Sean O'Malley. Although he has already fought a legit threat in Gerald Mearshart, he's only has one win at welterweight. A fight was supposed to take place with him and Luke Rockhold at UFC 268, but he declined it because he wanted to fight at welterweight. But just like O'Malley, we just have not ever seen him tested in the octagon, and he only has fought in the octagon three times. All of his performances has been dominant but they also have been against opponents who were worse than the ones the UFC were giving O'Malley, and that's saying a lot. We don't even know the extent of his skill set because we've never seen any real resistance. What happens if he can't take a guy down and is forced to stand and trade with him? What happens if his opponent survived the onslaught that he brings early and we find out he has a lackluster cardiovascular system and can't keep up with his own pace? What happens if the lingering symptoms of COVID-19 has damaged his lungs and he will never be the same? There's a rumor going around that he's not the best under intense volume striking. So what happens if he beats this guy and the UFC puts him in a fight with somebody like Colby Covington or Jorge Masvidal or Vicente Luque right away? My main question is, what if the UFC is pushing him a little too fast considering he's only fought three times in the organization? and only has one win in his weight class against an absolute scrub. I guess we have to find out 
like I said, I am aware that this video can age like lukewarm cottage cheese, but my question still remains until I see him get truly tested. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's been your boy Trippy, and I'm out, man. Peace. And I can't wait for UFC 267.